We now learn about discrete random variables, and in particular, we'll be learning about probability distribution functions. Now, a good starting point is to understand what is actually meant by a discrete random variable. And for that, we need to first know what a discrete variable is. Now, a discrete variable is typically referred to with a capital letter, say capital X, capital Y, or capital Z, and all that it is, is a variable which can only take on a certain countable number of values. Another way of saying that is that a discrete variable is a variable which can only take on a finite number of values. For instance, let's say we're sitting a mathematics test which is scored out of 5. Then we could define the discrete variable, capital X, as the score obtained on the test. And in which case, capital X, the variable, could take on either of the values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And those are the only values this discrete variable could take. We can therefore clearly see that a discrete variable is simply a variable which can only take on a certain number of values. Now, a discrete random variable is also referred to using a capital letter, say capital X or Y or Z. And for discrete random variables, the value of the variable, say capital X, depends on probability. In other words, depends on chance. So an example could be if we're rolling a single dice, then we could define the discrete random variable, capital X, as the number obtained when we roll the dice. In which case, capital X could take on either of the six values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Or let's say that we're still playing with the same dice, but this time we roll it three times in a row, and we're interested in seeing the number of sixes we can obtain when we roll it three times. In which case, we could define the discrete random variable, capital X, as being the number of sixes we obtain when rolling the dice three times. Now, if we roll a dice three times, we can either get zero, one, two, or three sixes. So this discrete random variable, capital X, could either equal to zero, one, two, or three. Now, one thing that's quite clear when working with discrete random variables is the fact that each of the possible values of the discrete random variable depends on chance. Another way of saying that is each of these values has a certain probability. And for this first example, it's quite easy. The probability of rolling a 1 is 1 over 6. Similarly, the probability of rolling a 2 is 1 over 6, and 3, and 4, and 5, and 6. On the other hand, for the second example, when I'm rolling a dice three times and I'm interested in the number of sixes we obtain, in that case, the probabilities are slightly more complex. In fact, I'll give them to you. The probability of rolling zero sixes when rolling a dice three times is 125 over 216. The probability of rolling only one six would be 75 over 216. The probability of rolling two sixes would be 15 over 216. And finally, the probability of rolling three sixes when rolling a dice three times would only be 1 over 216. Now, one very important thing about discrete variables is the following. A discrete variable is random if and only if the sum of all of the probabilities of its possible values equals to 1. And if we look at both of these examples, we'll see that that's the case. Indeed, we can see that 1 over 6 plus 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 1 over 6 equals to 1. Similarly, for the case when I'm rolling a dice three times and interested in the number of sixes we get, we can add these and see that 125 over 216 plus 75 over 216 plus 15 over 216 plus 1 over 216 is also equal to 1. And in fact, this is a condition. This has to be true to be able to state that a discrete variable is indeed a discrete random variable. Now, one important thing we're going to be learning about here is something known as a probability distribution function, 
which sounds rather complicated. But all it really is, is we're going to be learning about functions which give us the probability that the discrete random variable take on its possible values. And the way we would write this is as follows. The probability that the discrete random variable capital X equals to one of its possible values, lowercase x, is equal to some function of x. And just to clarify, this capital X is the discrete random variable. On the other hand, this lowercase x are the possible values that it can take. So in the second example, x, lowercase x, would be any of the values 0, 1, 2, or 3. Do not worry, that's going to become much clearer in just a minute. Let's look at an example of a probability distribution function. Let's say we're given a wheel on which we have the numbers 1, 2, 3 written on it, and we were to spin it. Something looking like this. We can see that we have a wheel numbered 1, 2, and 3, and that it's spinning. And we may be interested in knowing on which number this wheel stops spinning. For instance, we could have a little pointer here on the right-hand side of the wheel, and we may be interested in knowing on which number this pointer points when this wheel stops. Now for that, we could define the discrete random variable, capital X, which would just be number obtained when wheel stops, when wheel stops. Now, looking at this, it's quite clear that this discrete random variable can take on one of three values, those three values being one, two, or three. Now, on top of that, what will often happen in exercises is we'll be given the probability distribution function. And in this case, we're told that the probability distribution function is the probability of the discrete random variable capital X being equal to X is equal to X squared over 14, where this lowercase x, this variable, refers to the various values of X that the discrete random variable can take. So those would be 1, 2, and 3. And we'll often write this as X, two dots, a set with the different values the discrete random variable can take, like I've done there. Now, how do we actually use this? Well, let's say I want to calculate the probability that this wheel stops spinning on 1. In other words, I want to know the probability that capital X equals to 1. Well, all I would have to do here is replace X inside the function that we're given by 1 and calculate. So that would be 1 squared over 14, which equals to 1 over 14. Similarly, I could calculate the probability that the wheel stops on 2. That would be the probability that capital X equals to 2 equals to, well, I just replace the X by 2 in the function now, and that will give us 2 squared over 14, which equals to 4 over 14. And finally, I could, of course, also calculate the probability that this wheel stops on 3, and to do that, I would simply replace x by 3 inside the function. That would be the probability that the wheel stops on 3 equals to 3 squared over 14, which equals to 9 over 14. And so that's what probability distribution functions are used for, to calculate probabilities. Now, on top of this, we'll often use the probability distribution functions to actually check that a discrete variable is indeed random. And to check whether or not a discrete variable is random, all we have to do is add up all the probabilities that we calculated. So in this case, that would be 1 over 14 plus 4 over 14 plus 9 over 14, and that's equal to 14 over 14, which equals to 1. And since it's equal to 1, this confirms that this discrete variable is indeed a discrete random variable. Now that we've defined what a discrete random variable is, as well as what a probability distribution function is, let's go ahead and work through a quick typical quiz type question on this. Okay, we're given a typical exercise here and we're told that a discrete random variable, capital X, can take on either of the values 1, 2, 3, or 4. We're also told that it has a probability distribution function, which is often referred to as a PDF, and that is defined by the probability that the discrete random variable equals to X 
is equal to x over 10. We're then asked to calculate the probability that the discrete random variable equals to 2, then equals to 3, and finally we're asked to show that capital X, the discrete random variable, is indeed a discrete random variable. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. To begin with, I'll just quickly move this to the side here. There we go. All right, so well, to answer the first question, question 1, we need to find the probability that the discrete random variable equals to 2. That's the probability that capital X equals to 2. Well, to calculate this, all I need to do is replace X inside the probability distribution function by 2. So that would be 2 over 10. And of course, that equals to 0 0.2. And that's it. We now answer the second question, question 2. And in this case, we were asked to calculate the probability that capital X equals to 3. Well, to do that, all I have to do is replace every x I see inside the formula by 3. So that would be 3 over 10, which equals to 0 0.3. And that's question 2 done. Finally, we move on to question 3, and we're asked to show that capital X is indeed a discrete random variable. Well, to do this, we need to use the fact that a discrete variable is only random if the sum of all of its possible probabilities equals to 1. And in this case, since the discrete random variable can take on any of the values 1, 2, 3, or 4, we need to add the values of the probabilities of x being equal to 1, 2, 3, or 4 and checking whether or not it's equal to 1. And we've already calculated the probability that capital X equals to 2 and that capital X equals to 3. So we need to start here, really, by calculating the probability that the discrete random variable equals to 1. And that's equal to 1 over 10, which equals to 0 0.1. We also need to calculate the probability that this discrete random variable equals to 4. That's the probability that x equals to 4, which equals to 4 over 10, which equals to 0 0.4. Finally, we need to add all of these probabilities up and see or check whether or not they're equal to 1. That's the probability that x equals to 1 plus the probability that x equals to 2 plus the probability that x equals to 3 plus the probability that x equals to 4. And that's equal to 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4. And adding all of these together, we see that indeed that's equal to 1. And the fact that it's equal to 1 is what allows us to state and confirm that capital X is indeed a discrete random variable. There we go, everyone. I really hope that helped. And if it did, please hit like on this video and even subscribe to our channel because that really does help us. And if you're watching this on our website, make sure to work through the exercise below this tutorial with worked solutions. I'll see you soon.